this. And then this, so that's the positive feminine on the left. And then on the right, that's the Gorgon. And, and that's the thing that fills you with terror when you look at it. There's another representation of the positive feminine. It's another representation of Mary. There are representations very much like this of Isis with Horus on her lap. And people often consider those precursors, they're Egyptian, Egyptian statues, precursors to the Christian iconography. And, well, I suppose in some sense they are, insofar as they predated them in time. But the, the fundamental issue is that, well, that, this image has to be held up as transcendent and by that I mean it's, it's got to be it's an image that's got to be at the basis of a value structure that actually works insofar as there's going to be human beings because there aren't any human beings without the infant and the mother and so if that's not held up as a as an image of, of ultimate value then everything falls apart and it's something our culture does extraordinarily badly I had a client recently admit to me in ashamed tones that she wanted to have children I thought and I said, well, you don't have to be ashamed of that, especially not if you're talking to me. And she said, oh, that's such a relief because I can't talk to anyone about it at work. They, they seem to think that it's, you know, degrading. I thought that you can hardly diagnose a culture as more pathological than, than that. That's so appalling and it's so hard. It's one of the things I really feel badly for young women because they're not guided through this with any sense whatsoever. And I'll tell you what my experience has been working with women and you can take this for what it's worth. And, and I've worked with women who've, achieved the highest levels of their profession, I don't mean just in academia, but in a number of different fields. This is what happens. We'll, we'll take the typical woman, conservative woman, because they're more typical, conscientious, not particularly open, so they're, they're dutiful people, you know, they're existing within the structures of their society. So I'll take female lawyers as a classic example. So they're very good in high school, very hardworking, very intelligent. But very, but very dutiful and often rather agreeable and that's important because it means to some degree that they want to please and they'll do what they're told and so part of the reason I think that women are outperforming men in, in elementary, junior high school, high school and university is because they're more likely to be obedient and I know that to some degree because we did analysis of students in Quebec and found out that one thing that predicted grades over and above intelligence and conscientiousness was agreeable and agreeable people got better grades than their IQ and conscientiousness would predict and that's particularly negative for men so imagine this is what's happening so you're a borderline student and you're also a bit rebellious and antisocial I'm gonna fail you like you're right on the cusp don't like you much you fail you have exactly the same grade profile but I like you tick you move ahead you don't and so one of the things that's dividing men from women as they progress through school is the degree to which they're agreeable. Now that works out to some degree for women insofar as the agreeableness moves them forward, but they encounter the negative elements of being agreeable later in their careers. Anyways, their women are very good in high school, then they go to college, they're very good in college, they nail their damn grades, they do their studying, they get their A's and they, and they ace their LSATs so they're smart too. Then they go off to do their articling and they're really, really good at it. And then they get offered an associate position and they're really, really good at it. And then by the time they're 30, they make partner. And let's say they're in high pressure, high paying jobs, $250,000 a year, $300,000 a year, $500 an hour. Okay, what's your life like? You work all the time, period. 70 hours a week, 75 hours a week, flat out. And you don't get to make any mistakes. And if your client calls you at 3 in the morning on, Monday, on Sunday, you say, I'm really glad to hear you, hear from you. Because if you don't, there's some hot law firm in New York that'll take your client from you at a moment's notice. And the client is paying you, whatever, the firm, $750 an hour, of which maybe you get $350. And what they want is an answer about something really complicated, right bloody now. And you can say all you want about the fact that women have a difficult time with that because it's a male-dominant patriarchy. Any, any female lawyer who's hit 30 and is a partner that has any sense at all knows that's complete bloody rubbish. It's market determined right to the core. What happens to the women when they're in their 30s? They all leave the high-end law firms. Why? Because who in their right mind would want to live like that? That's the issue, right? Once you make about $60,000 a year, for your family, but let's say for you personally, additional income makes zero, has zero impact on your quality of life. Zero. So why work 80 hours a week? Well, men will do it, some men, very few. 
a handful of hyper-competitive men who are obsessed with hitting the pinnacle of the given dominance hierarchy they're in will happily work 80 hours a week and they'll forego everything else relationships, family, children way in the second category and so those men are often very difficult to live with too because they're so obsessed with their career it's hard to have a relationship with them and maybe they don't have much of a relationship with their kids but they're damn good at what they do and part of that is, is they're smart and disciplined and they'll work non-stop all the time it's like an obsession and that's the sort of people who run things those are the people who run things well they're often also disagreeable too because you want to, you want to manage people? really? they're not going to like you you know, and it's not an easy thing to not be liked and actually if you're an agreeable person and women are more agreeable than men it's quite painful to be disliked but if you're in a managerial and executive position the probability that people are going to like you is quite low now, if you're a real son of a bitch then they're going to dislike you more but it's, it's, those, those positions are very stressful partly because of the interpersonal dynamics and they're also incredibly, incredibly competitive so the women hit that at 30 and they're completely qualified and the law firms are bloody desperate to keep them because it's really hard to find highly qualified people especially once you've put all that time into training them especially if they're also good at bringing in business the law firms trip over themselves to try to keep them they can't the women think why in the world am I doing this? why in the world would anyone in their right mind do this? especially because they're often married by that point too and generally they've married a husband who makes as much money or more than them so they don't need the damn money and so they think well there's more to life than this which is exactly the right thing to think and so then they go and find a job that's 9 to 5 and controllable so that they can hire a nanny and have some kids and have a life and it's like yes that's the intelligent thing to do so we've got things backwards in our culture we're thinking at least in part why aren't there more women in positions of power? wrong question the right question is why are there any men at all who want those positions of power? because it's not just positions of power you have to be such a knothead to think that oh, it's a position of power it's like, sure but it's a position of overwhelming responsibility and if you make mistakes, you're done right? it's not like you occupy that position of power and everyone does what they're told all the time and your life is easy it's like, forget about that people are on your case to do exactly the right thing all the time, 100% of the time and maybe you want that, and maybe you don't, so the what, I don't know what people think, is these people are all sitting in their offices with their like, feet up on the desk, smoking cigars and oppressing the world it's like, that isn't how it works, those people, they work flat out, all the time so, and it's fine if that's what you want, and some people are like that, they're hyper-industrious people, right, from a trait perspective no matter where you put them if you put them in a forest with an axe, they just wander around chopping down trees non-stop, right? because it's built into them but, if you want to have a balanced life, and, and you should want that, you know, because the other thing you'll find and this is God's gospel truth, is that the older you get, if you have any sense at all, the more important your family is to you like, the, the, the utility of your career, maybe that peaks around 35 or 40, and it starts to decline pretty rapidly after that, and what happens if you're fortunate you have someone in your life that you love, that you've woven yourself together with, and you have some kids, so that you have something to do from the time you're 50 till the time you're 80 and so, it's a real mistake, it's a barren future without children, man, I can tell you that, it's a real mistake and so we do a terrible job of, of say, putting that image forward and saying, well, yeah, now you know, because women have access to the birth control pill now and can compete in the same domains as men, roughly speaking there is a real practical problem here it's partly an economic problem now because when I was roughly your age it was still possible for a one income family to exist well, you know that wages have been flat except in the upper 1% since 1973 why? well, it's easy what happens when you double the labor force? what happens? you have the value of labor so now we're in a situation where it takes two people to make as much as one did before so we went from a situation where women's career opportunities were relatively limited to where they were relatively unlimited and there were two incomes to where, and so women could work to a situation where women have to work and they only make half as much as they would have otherwise and now we're going to go into a situation this is the next step whereas women will work because men won't and that's what's coming now so we, there was an economics, e economist article showing that 50% now 
of, of boys in school are having trouble with their basic subjects and you look around you in universities, you can see this happening I've watched it over decades I would say 90% of the people in my personality class are now women there won't be a damn man left in university in 10 years except in the STEM fields and it's a complete bloody catastrophe and it's a catastrophe for women because I don't know where the hell you're going to find someone to to have a, you know, to marry and have a family with if this keeps happening so, and you think when you're 19, because you're so clueless when you're 19, you don't know a bloody thing You think, well, I'm not really sure I want children anyways It's like, oh yeah, you tell how well you've been educated Jesus, dismal Dismal Without fail, I gotta tell you, without fail, I've watched women go through their professional careers, many, many of them It's a very rare woman who at the age of 30 doesn't consider having a child her primary desire and the ones that don't consider that, generally, in my observation, there's something that isn't quite right in the way that they're constituted or looking at the world. Sometimes you get women who are truly non-maternal, you know, by temperament. They're, they have a masculine temperament, disagreeable, they're not, they're not particularly compassionate, they're not maternal, they don't really, they're not that interested in kids. Fair enough, man. But there aren't that many of them, and there's plenty who will not admit to themselves that that's what they most desperately want. Do you think women would be better off if they had kids earlier to focus on career, say in their 30s? <sighs> Who knows? Like, it's like it really is a problem. Yeah, it's a really tough one. I don't think anybody knows the answer to that because... I mean, if, you're, if you're 35 and your kids are, say, 10, 11, yeah. then you can go get a bachelor's degree, get your master's. Well... It seems, it seems more easy that way yeah. than having the career first and then trying to raise young kids. Yeah, I, I, I can't answer that, because I've seen women do a good job of it both, both ways. And you do get the odd woman who manages a high-powered career and kids, but Jesus, those women, man. Like, they, they, they buy more powerful microwaves because it'll take 45 seconds to cook the food instead of a minute. And I'm not kidding, it's like they're, they're up at five, they exercise for half an hour, they make breakfast, they get their kids ready to work, they go to work, they work 14 hours, 14 hour days, flat bloody out, they come home and work for another two hours to get their kids organized, they have a nanny to, to help them out, and then they work for two more hours before they go to bed at like one, and then they're up at five and they do that again. And I'll tell you, you better be tough if you're going to do that, physically too, because you'll just burn yourself to a crisp. I've seen some women manage it, you know, but they're like, they're tough and they're rare because that's a hell of a, a hell of a regimen. And then if anything goes wrong, you know, you have a sick kid or something like that, or there's any sort of crisis in your family, it's just, you know, it, it's then it becomes too much. And I don't know the answer to that. You know, I mean, the advantage women have is they live about eight years longer than men, because testosterone kills men. So. Well, that, that, that's right. They pay up front and, and gain on the, on the, on the, in the long run. But how, it isn't clear how our society should sort this out. We don't know, and it's partly we don't know what to do now that women have control of their reproductive function. It's a big mystery. Yep? Um, I don't have an answer to that either. But I think from a practical aspect, and this goes for both men and women, even if women were to enter the workforce later on, they'd be at competition with people who are younger, and that's always a conflict in the workforce. Like people are always hiring younger yeah, talent um, because of how long they can be in the workforce. Yeah. Yes, well, and the thing is, young stupid people have the advantage of being young. Middle-aged stupid people have the disadvantage of being middle-aged and so if you're gonna hire a young stupid person or a Middle-aged stupid person you'll go for the young stupid person and I'm by stupid. I mean, you know, no, not I'm being sarcastic obviously, but I, I mean without without experience and just getting started in the world You're much more likely to favor someone young because there's an instant explanation for their relative cluelessness and it's a problem, you know, so so I don't know what the answer is, but one, one answer certainly is, at, at least in part, is to start letting young women know what being 30 and being female is like. Because, and also to disabuse them of the notion that there's something magical about a career. First of all, most people don't have careers, man. They have jobs. And the reason you get paid for a job is because you're being asked to do things you wouldn't do unless you were being paid. And so it's not, 